Hey, what is going on YouTube? It is your boy Tropical NHL back at it again for a brand new YouTube video. Today we're going to be talking about the NHL entry draft. And you know what? A couple of days ago I made an NHL top 10 mock draft. I give you guys my opinion on who was going to go where in the top 10 of the draft. You know, this week it was the scouting combine of the NHL. Teams were interviewing prospects. Prospects were doing some physical tests, some interviews. They were talking in the media and we got a lot more infos on the team's interests and in players. So I'm going to be doing my post scouting combine NHL mock draft for the 2023 NHL entry draft. You guys know it. This is known to be the best to draft since 2015. And in 2015, there were a lot of superstars that were drafted in this draft. So before getting into the mock draft, I invite you guys to subscribe if you haven't already. We're trying to get the 4K subscribers before the draft in two weeks. We're going to be doing a 12 hour long live stream on draft day. We're going to be reacting and everything going on on live stream, making videos, reacting to trades, talking about rumors and reacting to the draft as well. So if you want to be notified on when this stream is going to happen, subscribe and turn on post notifications as well as the like button. Let's try and get 100 likes on this video. For or the mock draft. Do not hesitate to give me your top 10 mock draft as well in the comments down below. I'm always open to discuss. So yeah, let's get right into it. So this was the mock draft I made last week with the infos we had. This was my first mock draft I was making for this draft. This was my first opinion. And a lot of things changed for me since then with the infos we got from the scouting combine. I mean, obviously, Connor Bedard at first is not going to change. I had Leo Carlson going to the Anaheim Ducks, Van Tilly to the Columbus Blue Jackets, Mishkov going to the San Jose Sharks, Will Smith to the Canadians, Rainbacher to the Coyotes, Leonard to the Flyers, Dvorsky to the Capitals, Sell to the Red Wings, and Zachary Benson going to the St. Louis Blues. You will see my new mock draft is a lot different because a lot of things have changed since then. We got a lot more infos and we have a better idea on how the draft will turn out to be. Obviously, there's still two weeks left, so I might do another one a couple of days before the draft because there's still a lot of time for things to change. And of course, you know it, there's always going to be a ton of surprise on draft night, so this is most likely not going to happen like I think it will. But yes, it's always fun doing some mock draft, doing some predictions and updating it the closer we're getting to the official draft. So yes, let's get right into it. Obviously, this hasn't changed. I still have Connor Bedard going at first overall. I don't have any arguments. I mean, the guy is just that good. He's the generational talent of this decade, and he is going to be going first overall with the Chicago Blackhawks. It's going to be a lot of fun watching him play over there, even though it's not the best case scenario. It would have been fun watching him play with his good buddy, Mason McTavish, with the Chicago Blackhawks original six team. The logo is fired. The jerseys are fired fire it will still be pretty dope at the second overall my opinion changed i mean i had leo carlson at first but now with the interviews he made he just looks like a really really confident kid and i do think that he is gonna go second overall to the anaheim ducks i mean with had him fancy they are practically guaranteed on getting an 80 to 90 point future selkie caliber player and when you're a team like the anaheim ducks even though they have a lot of depth at the center position i think that you can't really pass on a guy like adam fantilli he has the swagger as well to play in anaheim and he would fit perfectly well with a guy like trevor zegras that could become a winger with the depth they will have at the center position in the future. So yes, I changed my mind. I'm going to go for Adam Fantilli at the second overall. But like I said on the other video, I wouldn't be surprised as well if they took a guy like Leo Carlson, for example. At the third overall, obviously, I swapped them. I have Leo Carlson going to the Columbus Blue Jackets with the move they made. Over the last couple of days, they look like a team that wants to be competitive in the short term. I don't think they made the right moves, but I might do another video talking about this. But as the big centerman, Leo Carlson would 100% be the right fit for the Columbus Blue Jackets. Big, fast, strong. He already was playing with adults for the last two years back in Europe. He is probably one of the most NHL-ready prospect in this draft. He is the perfect fit, European, all of that. I genuinely think that he would have an impact right away as soon as next season with the Blue Jackets, and I think that they kind of have to go with him. It is a no-brainer for the Blue Jackets and Leo Carlson. At the fourth overall spot, this is where it changed. 
I have the San Jose Sharks taking a guy like Will Smith. Will Smith is the offensive center that has a high ceiling in point 80 to 100 points in his prime. That's what his ceiling is. He's one of the best players to ever come out of the U.S. National Development Program. He's a heck of an offensive threat. He is going to get a lot of points. And the San Jose Sharks are apparently really, really high on the guy. He's going to go and visit San Jose as soon as next week. And all the San Jose Sharks' insiders have reported over the last two days that apparently the Sharks have already decided that they were going to take Will Smith if he's available. And with the quality of the top three in front of him, it's practically a lock that he is going to be available. So the San Jose Sharks are most likely going to take him. So that's why I have him at the fourth overall now. They still have a couple of years left in their rebuild. But taking a guy like Will Smith at the fourth overall is certainly going to be a step in the right direction for On my first mock draft, I had Will Smith going to the Canadians. That's what I wanted. But now that Will Smith is going to the San Jose Sharks, it has to be different now. It has to be different. Will the Habs take a chance on Mishkov? I don't think they will. And I don't think that they will be the only team skipping on him. I have the Montreal Canadiens selecting at the fifth overall. Ryan Leonard from the U.S. National Development Program. Often compared to Brady and Matthew Kachuk, Ryan Leonard is the winger that plays fast and strong, that has the grit, that is aggressive, that is going to go behind the net, in the corners, in front of the net, in the dirty areas. He is a guy that's going to hit big, that's going to play big, and he is a guy that will have an impact in the playoffs and even in the regular season when the moments will be important. I know a lot of people will probably be mad at me saying this. A lot of Habs fans, because Mishkov will be available most likely. But apparently, can't use out a lot of praise for Ryan Leonard. And apparently, the Habs are really, really high on him. So most likely, I really do think that Ryan Leonard is going to be the pick for the Montreal Canadiens. And I do think that he will be a great player for them in the future. I think he has a ceiling of 70 to 85 points. Could be a point per game player having an impact on the team. And I could definitely see him play with Suzuki and Caulfield over the next couple of years in Montreal. Being the guy that is playing with some aggressivity, going in the corners to take the puck away from opponents. And I think that he would just be a great fit for the Habs. And like we saw in last year's draft, they like heavy personalities. And this guy is just like that. So I really do think that he is a perfect fit for the Montreal Canadiens. At the sixth overall spot, we have the Arizona Coyotes. And I think that they will go for the defenseman. David Renbacher, often compared to Moritz Sider, I think it's a bit of a stretch to compare him to Sider. I think it's a bit of a forced comparison. I think he's going to be a good defenseman, but I don't see him becoming the top two first pairing defenseman that a lot of people think he will become. He will most likely be a really, really good top four defenseman with a decent offensive upside, a decent offensive production. But I don't think it's worth it taking him at the sixth overall. But since the Coyotes have a need on the defense, they don't have that much defensive prospects. I think that they will be tempted on going for David Rubacher. I mean, yes, they do have the 12th overall. David Rambacher might still be available at that spot. But David Rambacher is also really, really high on some other teams' lists. So I think that they will not take any chances and take him at the 6th overall spot and take another forward who's going to be available at the 12th overall. You might call me crazy for that one, but that's what I think. Well, the Philadelphia Flyers take Matt Vimishkov at the 7th overall. Well, I do not think they will. At the 7th overall, I have the Philadelphia Flyers taking the Libor Dvorsky. I mean, we saw him at the U18 championship. He was absolutely amazing. He scored some goals. He was good defensively. He was good at everything he was doing on the ice. And I really do think that this guy has a high ceiling in the NHL. I think that he has a potential to be a really good player. The problem is with him that he has a big bust potential as well. It's either he becomes a really, really good player or he never becomes anything big. So yes, it's a bit of a risk on taking him, but at the seventh overall, I think that the Flyers, if they can develop him well, if they can put him in the right spot at the right time, they would have a pretty decent player in Dullabor Dvorsky as a centerman. And I think that he could be a pretty similar player to what Claude Giroux was in his prime if he develops right. So yes, Dullabor Dvorsky going seventh overall to the Philadelphia Flyers. At the eighth overall spot, obviously, the Washington Capitals. And I have them selecting, finally, 
Mad V Mishkov. I already made a couple of videos talking about Mishkov because he's often linked to the Montreal Canadiens. I don't think that teams will be able to get the answers to their questions. They will get no guarantee on when he's going to come play in the NHL. Will it be 2026? Will he re-sign in Russia for longer? With the war situation going on with Russia and Ukraine, I think it's a bit scary for teams to select Mad V Mishkov. I think that's why he's going to slide down that much. I think with Oveshkin and all the Russian guys they have in their system, I think that the Capitals will be the most likely team to take a chance on Mishkov. And I think that they would be the team as well that could make it work better with all the contacts that they have in Russia and with the KHL. So yes, Madvi Mishkov coming to the Washington Capitals would be a great fit in my opinion. And I think that they will be the only team ready to take a chance on him in the top 10. I might be wrong. I might be not. I guess we'll see on draft night. At the ninth overall spot, I have a guy like Oliver Moore going to the Detroit Red Wings. I mean, he's a pretty similar player to what Dylan Larkin is. He's really, really, really fast. He's an offensive player. He has a pretty high ceiling in the NHL. I could see him become a pretty similar player to what Dylan Larkin is. So I could definitely see the Detroit Red Wings being interested in a guy like him. On the first mock draft, I had the Red Wings taking on Edward Sal. And the more I was looking at it, the more I was like, all right, this doesn't make any sense. So I think that Oliver Moore could be a way better fit for them in the shorter and in the longer term. Finally, at the 10th overall spot, uh, it's the same thing. I have Zachary Benson going to the St. Louis Blues. I mean, Zachary Benson is probably one of the best players out of this draft, but he's been a bit under the radar, a bit like Matthew Savoy last year, a bit like Matthew Barzell in his draft year, a bit like all of those guys that went down in the rankings on draft night, but that are really, really good players. I mean, he's going to be in each already in a year or two. So with the quick reset that the St. Louis Blues are trying to do at the moment, I think it would be a good fit for them and their organization. So yeah, that was my updated mock draft post scouting combined mock draft. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comments below. Give me yours as well in the comments. That would be amazing. Subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, share, do anything as you want. Join up the Discord. The link is in the description and I'll see See y'all later for another video. Have a nice rest of your day and bye-bye.